welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about, well, I'll be talking about my first AR pistol build. Now, if you're not new to the channel, I do have a video on my actual first AR build, but this is gonna be about my AR pistol, on how it went, how it's going, how it's performing as of now. So let's go ahead and get into it. Here is my AR pistol, chambered in 300 blackout. And we're gonna get a little bit more in depth on the parts, the price point and everything like that and how it's performing right now. Now that the firearm has been fully checked, cleared, mag removed, now let's go ahead and get into a more depth video. <laughs> this is gonna be more in depth now. So let's go ahead and get more in depth into it on the parts and everything like that. First, we're gonna go ahead and start off with the optic. The optic is not a very high quality optic, it's a sight mark optic. I believe I got this for, I can't even remember, I think maybe 100, maybe 100, maybe 140. I can't really remember exactly how much I paid for this. But as of as, as far as my test has been going, which has only been one test, well, it's been several tests, but an actual test at the range, it's only been once. And it was pretty much dialed in already. I had a couple little adjustments, little tweaks here and there. And I mean, as of now, from 25, 30 yards, right in the center. So I'm not gonna really say too much about the optic. Uh, you can choose pretty much any optic you want, but preferably a uh, better quality optic. So let's go ahead and remove these two parts. Let's go ahead and start with the lower receiver. Well, first let's go ahead and start with on why I wanted to build an AR pistol because uh, when I first got into building my first AR everything went so smoothly it turned out really nice and actually my first AR build is actually my favorite AR build still probably because I use semi quality parts and ever since then I've been slowly upgrading different type different parts I mean it's got better trigger in it it's got a different buffer weight everything like that buffer tube all that good stuff um, so it became my favorite AR build, possibly my favorite AR that I own, um, just because of how well it shoots and um, I haven't had any issue with that rifle at all. Now this pistol on the other hand, it was it was a thought that I had, you know, I, I like the AR pistol designs, I like how short they are, you know, in the time I built this, you know, I had the pistol brace on it as well, but it's, I didn't even have the pistol brace on this firearm, not even for a month before they banned them. So ever since then, this little project kind of like went out the window. I just stopped messing with it. So, um, but I did have plans sometime in the future to turn this into an SBR, you know, get the right paperwork and everything like that, get qualified for it. Um, but that'll be later down the road. Um, that's the plans for this right here because it's not really practical without the brace or without a stock or whatever just because I've tested it at the range and I can't tell you how many times this right here hit my nose multiple times. Um, and it could have been that I'm not that used to this firearm, but it does have the recoil is pretty little, it's a bit out of control. Um, I believe it is an eight inch barrel. So it's a little jumpy, um, but without a brace or without a stock, it's just not, it's not real not real functional in my opinion, you know, unless you want to be hitting everywhere but the target, then go for it. But uh, yeah, like I've always said, without the brace, my opinion, there are a lot. these firearms are a lot more dangerous without a, without a pistol brace. But um, all firearms do have their danger to them. If you don't, if you're not uh, careful with them, if you don't know what you're doing, you do got to be somewhat trained when, when it comes to dealing with firearms. However, they're still not that they're still not that great without without a little bit of support but um but yeah this is the lower receiver of the firearm now this is just wrapped in some type of like sticky sticky tape i thought it was going to be good but this is actually sticky on both on this side as well so that's the only thing i don't like about it um but i just wrapped it up you know easy to take off and all as you can tell this little flap keeps on coming off coming undone just because it's been like this for a few months but anyways the lower receiver is an arrow precision lower receiver. You know, nothing too crazy, but it looks good. I also wanted to change the grip out, but like I said, this is this build will probably continue once I'm ready to turn this into an SBR and all that. Um, 
But in the meantime, this firearm is gonna be staying like this for a while. Uh, but the trigger, you know, basic AR trigger, uh, A2 style grip, um, you know, everything. This actually, I, yeah, this I purchased as a complete lower receiver. So I believe that makes it a wrap for the lower receiver. Like I said, it's basic lower receiver. Um, nothing too fancy. Stock. Now let's go ahead and move over to charging handle and bolt carrier group. Now, if you remembered from my video, if you're not, you can go back to the video of my first AR build where I show more depth video. Um, well, before we go that far, the price breakdown for this one right here, I believe was words of, I believe I spent 180 to 200 around that area for the lower receiver. I can't remember exactly on the price point, but I believe that's how much it was. It was around 180 to 200. Um, so there you go that with that. Now, like my other AR, I previously already had a bolt carrier group for this AR pistol, which was an error precision bolt carrier group. I even asked the people over um, online if, uh, if it would work with an eight inch barrel AR pistol. They told me it would for 300 blackout, but unfortunately it did not fit this firearm. I could not get the upper receiver to close. I couldn't get the bolt carrier group to seat, seat well. Um, so what I did is I just went and bought and purchased a, the same bolt carrier group as my other AR because I took that one out, test fitted it, and it fit perfectly. So that's what I did. I went and bought the same bolt carrier group as my other AR build, and which is the, the Rise Armament AR pistol. I mean, not AR pistol, but the AR bolt carrier group. You know, that's a nice little, little finish to it. It looks really nice. Um, the cleaning process is not that difficult, you know, but it is gonna get stained over time. It's, this one right here just looks just about brand new just because this firearm has not been used that much. I might've gotten 30 rounds out of this firearm so far, but um, we'll talk about that here in a, here in a bit. Um, but this, these uh, Rise Armament bolt carrier groups are amazing. I got them in both rifles, well, pistol and one rifle. And I actually plan on keep on keep on using these because they're a little up and little bit up in the price, but they make a big difference. Um, I believe this one I paid 180, 170. Yeah, I'm gonna say 170 to 200 just to be sure because I'm not exactly confident in my prices right now. I should have I should have went back into my car to see the price. But you can check these out on different websites. Um, but yeah, there you go. Now the charging handle is this AR Breach Arrow Precision. I, I really fell in love with the color. That's pretty much why I went with it. But um, I like this Ambi Control. You know, you can pull on both sides. But this charging handle. Um, I believe I paid 60 to 80 bucks for this. I think right at 80 bucks, I think it was. Um, yeah, very nice charging handle, nice quality. Doesn't feel cheap, I love it. Now let's go ahead, as I already said, the barrel is a, wait, no. Now this upper receiver, I, I also purchased it as a complete upper receiver. However, I end up taking the whole thing apart and putting it back together. No shame towards air precision because it's the first time it's ever happened to me, but and it might have been my fault, I don't know. So I'm not blaming anybody, probably just myself. Um, but anyways, when I got it, um, I tried to put everything together and then I had issues with the, uh, with the bulk carrier group uh, fitting well. So what I did is I you know, I checked everything and I noticed it was hitting with the gas tube and yeah, it just wouldn't fit. And I think my biggest problem was the fact that the gas tube is, uh, is coated and the, uh, the bulk carry group was, uh, was coated as well. I don't know if that's an issue where the fitment problem was going. Cause I have, I have used that bulk carry group in my other AR build, which I will be making a video on that as well. I don't know when, but I will be. Um, and it worked perfectly fine with that one because I used a chrome lined, uh, not a chrome lined, uh, just a chrome finish, a stainless steel finished uh, gas tube. Maybe that was the issue, I don't know. 
But when I'm when I what I realized was when I was trying to fit the bulk carrier group, uh, the gas tube came loose. So that made me take everything apart. Uh, dimpled the barrel, I took the uh, gas block off, dimpled the barrel, put everything back, and everything was fine. Put everything together and uh, took it to the range to do some testing. And what I've noticed is it jammed a lot. It did jam a lot. I didn't test it until like a year after building it. I mean, I tested at 4th of July, New Year, stuff like that. But just a couple shots and everything worked perfectly. Um, I'm not sure if, yeah, what I did think, what I do think the issue was, that's why I still want to do more testing, but my first thought was gas block, change it over to an adjustable gas block. Because 300 blackout, a lot of people say they're a little, you know, iffy with when it comes to different types of rounds and, you know, stuff like that. But, uh, so what I do think is, I don't necessarily think it's a gas block, but I do want to go ahead and change it just for the future. I might end up getting a suppress, suppressor for this one as well. So I do want to go ahead and change that out for an adjustable gas block. But my issue is I think that the ammunition I was using was possibly subsonic ammunition. And I think that's what the issue was. Um, like I've been told many times, you know, I've heard it many times at least that when you have ammunition or when you get a new firearm, test out different brands and leave them in the box that it comes in so you know what brand it is. Well, my idea was putting everything in the same in the same little tub and uh, well, when you do it like that, you don't really know what brand it came from. So I do believe that's what the issue was because out of this mag right here was the mag that I could not finish. It would shoot around, it would fire around, eject the shell but it wouldn't it wouldn't uh, chamber the next round my other mag flawless every single one 30 rounds so I do believe it was a ammunition issue but uh, like I said I do want to go ahead and go to the store get a couple different brands of 300 blackout and test it out a little bit more so as far as reliability goes I won't give it the reliability check just because it needs some more it needs some more work done to it um, but uh, I do feel like with the right ammunition it will fire correctly it will work correctly but um, this is this is like gonna be my actual truck gun right here but once I've tested it at the range that's why it's very important even if it's a brand new firearm even if you bought it from a manufacturer whatever it's always important to test them out because sometimes they just they just jam this is the only firearm I actually own that does that does jam. My 1911 jams here and there, um, but that also depending on what type of ammunition I use. That's why you need to test them, test different ammunition, and find out which one, it, uh, which uh, which ammunition your firearm runs runs right with. But other than that, this firearm I do like the the look of it, the feel of it. Um, I do feel like eight inches might just be a little on the short side for me. Cause I mean, I got fairly large hands, so yeah, it just feels a little bit short, but with the pistol, with the pistol brace, or like I said, I do want to SBR this in the future, having a stock on this will make it an amazing, will make it an amazing firearm. But uh, I do believe that's it for this little review of the my first AR pistol build. Will I do one again? I would, but it will have to be SBR. They just have to. I do want to do a 14 inch in the future. Um, I think a 14 inch would be perfect. A perfect size. But, uh, but yeah, let me know what you think about my first AR pistol build. Yeah, and there you go. Till next time, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out.